And it's time now for our twice weekly In Focus Health update. Joining us now is health reporter Lino Madu. And Lino is here to tell us about uh, cultural practice in Ethiopia that is continuing to be a health concern in that country. Yes. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Hello. Dimiake. It is called female circumcision or genital cutting, a long time cultural practice that some communities in Ethiopia are working to end. When she was seven years old, Maiza was tied up and laid on a board. Her father told her she was being taken outside to the garden. When the cutter was going to cut me, they covered my eyes and they tied up my hands until she finished. When they untied me and opened my blindfold, I slapped that cutter in the face. In having their daughters undergo the procedure, Maiza's parents did what they believed was expected. They thought cutting was necessary to make them marriageable and to protect them from embarrassment and being different. At the time, I hadn't heard anything about the harms of cutting. I simply didn't want them to be outspoken and insulted by others. I got them cut to spare them that shame. The World Health Organization defines female genital mutilation, or FGM, as all procedures that involve partial or total removal of the external female genitalia or other injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. The practice is typically carried out on girls from a few days old to puberty. It is usually performed without anesthesia by a traditional circumciser using a knife, razor or scissors. Female circumcision has been banned by Ethiopian law. More than 70% of adult women in the country have been circumcised. My mother-in-law was the one who got me started. She taught me how to cut. I have cut a lot of young girls. That was how I made a living. Some supporters of female circumcision say often it is an initiation rite that has been practiced for a generation with cultural meaning and value. Since 2008, UNICEF and the European Union have been working to discourage cutting in the three regions of Ethiopia where it is most prevalent and replace the practice with other ceremonies. There have been very important activities implemented through this program focusing on community dialogue, the process that gets opinion leaders at community level, uh, religious leaders, uh, chiefs, elders, as well as the women themselves to uh, abandon the practice of female genital cutting. Regular meetings give villagers an opportunity to discuss human rights. Once communities reach a consensus on what is best for everyone, they hold an abandonment ceremony where a strong public commitment is made to stop female circumcision. Well, we have two guests today to discuss this issue. First, uh, joining us from London is Comfort Momo, a midwife who runs the African Well Women's Clinic in London, dedicated to caring for women affected by female genital cutting. And here with me in our Washington studio is Sia Fino, a children and women's rights advocate. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Let me start with you, uh, Ms. Fino. Uh, female circumcision is something personal as it is practiced in your culture. Tell us about, tell us about that. Um, the reason why I'm here, I'm not so much in support of um, female circumcision because if I say I support it, I'll be a hypocrite because I myself never experienced it. Um, but my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother were practitioner of female circumcision. And that made it personal to me okay. when I hear them um, addressing calling them mutilation, I think is very offensive, not just to me, but my grandmother. And we will get more into that. Um, Miss Momo, you are running the African World Women's Clinic. Tell us what you do there specifically. Okay, um, here in the UK, um, I run the African Well Women's Clinic, which is at um, Guys and St. Thomas's in London. Um, we support women who've been to um, circumcision or FGM. Um, we provide them with support, information, and we provide um, surgical repair as well. Uh, you talk about the surgical repair. What are you able to do when it, you, in terms of repairing? What are you repairing exactly? Okay, you know there are different types of um, circumcision. Um, the one we repair is um, if a woman has type 3, we de -infibulate. Okay, infibulation, which means the sewing. 
Yes. Okay. Now, uh, Ms. Fino, you say that you found it offensive to the usage of the term mutilation because of the cultural sensitivity? Yes, correct. Um, I think there's a better language we can use in order to eradicate female circumcision. Um, we can go in there and call the people names and expecting them to de continue the practice. And that becomes very offensive to me for my culture. Why is it practiced in your culture? What is the reason? Um, the reason mainly is for women not to be promiscuous, not to go out. It's, it's, it's a sens sensitivity topic, topic that women, if, if you don't have it done, you're more vulnerable to going out and giving your body up. But when they do it to you, you, you have the control because the feeling is not there I to see. seek um, men. And Ms. Momo, in your clinic, you deal with uh, women that come from uh, uh, various countries, I suppose. What do they tell you in terms of how they are, they are dealing with uh, being circumcised? Um, for some of these women, obviously, they tell me they feel less a woman because um, their clitoris, their labias has been removed and they feel really angry and um, it affects them psychologically, physically as well. So they, they get really angry for the fact that this has been done to them. We see that uh, some communities are, are trying to to practice this in a more hygienic setup, uh, because a lot of people that are critiquing uh, female circumcision say that it's not hygienic. Sometimes it's done in very terrible conditions. What do you think is the main problem there, Miss Momo? Is it the way it is practiced, or is it uh, the practice itself? To me, it's the practice itself, because if we're going to talk about female circumcision, female genital mutilation, we need a total eradication. We need to end it completely. We need to engage with the community, because for me, it's not about medicalizing it. People will argue and say, well, if you do it on the hygienic procedure, maybe you can cut down the complications, but you still have the psychological impact you still have children being held down to remove the clitoris, so you still have the physical, psychological and emotional um, consequences. What would you add um, to that? The psychological effect comes in when we are exposed to the Western world. Because the children that have it done in Africa, like myself, I used to see my cousins, my, my, little, my older sisters going through it. I, I was excited. I wanted to go and, and be part of that society that nobody talks about after whatever is done until I came to America. The reason why I w it wasn't practiced on me is because of my dad. He's educated and traveled all over the world and he saw the effect that it can do to a woman. So that's the reason why um, I didn't go. But the psychological effect is not actually in the, in the community in Sierra Leone or in was that a Somalia and other and, countries? And other countries. So yeah. quickly, in 10 seconds, uh, do you think it should continue then if girls there are not psychologically affected, according to you? No, I, don't think, I think there's a better way we can eradicate um, female circumcision by, like she said, um, involving the community and education. And you show them the, the pros and cons of having um, these practices continue on these little girls. Okay. I think that's the better way we can eradicate it. Okay, and that would be the final word. Miss Momo, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you um, so much. From the thank you. Great. And that was Comfort Momo of the African Well Women's Clinic in London and Siafino, a children and women's rights advocate here in Washington. We thank both of them for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Yeah. And uh, Dimiake, that's all. Well, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Lenoma Du joins us every Tuesday and Thursdays here on In Focus, always has updated health reports for us, interesting discussions.